All right, hello, it's Sarah. Today, we are going to be doing some shading, my favorite thing. Anywho, um, working on this uh, Judy Mullins, oh, Judy Mullins, Plum Purdy Renee Mullins, the porch, Santa porch greeter. Um, I have a couple other videos before this one if you want to paint along with me. But for today, I'm going to be adding some detail. So I'm just going to keep this little picture right next to me as a reference. And we're going to go into these directions here. And at face and lip, we're going to base coat with flesh tone, which I've already done. Um, we're going to shade the nose and float the cheeks along the bottom with, of the lip with coral blush. So if you look at the picture, you can see that she's done it along the bottom of the cheeks here and the bottom of the lip. So that's what I'm going to do. I have some coral. I don't have that color coral blush, but I figured this is close enough. And we're going to deepen it with a little bit of country red anyway. So, all right. I like to float with palette paper. I have my um, shop towels to blot my brush with and I'm going to be using a mop at times this is just to kind of pick up the water actually and it's dirty um, this is an angle brush this is a num it's a half inch faux squirrel angle brush by Dynasty and this was recommended by Tracy Moreau I like it it holds a lot of water which I love so you go into your water lot and then you load by just putting some paint on the corner of the brush and you go to your palette and load it into the bristles by going back and forth so that the paint will float across the water from darkest to water and that way you'll get a graduation of color that creates a shaded effect so when you go to your piece, I'm going to just start right in the corner. And I tend to, I pity pat my color on a lot, but you can just do it in one fell swoop. And then I turn the bristles as well to kind of stick it where I want it. It isn't easy at first. You're going to have to practice, but I just love what it, the result that you get from floating and I can go back over they have to let it dry because if I mess with it again right now before it's dry I'll pick it up and I'll mess it up so I'm just reloading my brush and I'm going to go over this side I like to move my piece so that I feel comfortable hopefully I'm in the shot put the corner in there and just gently glide it along the line of that mustache and kind of stop at his nose up here and then the, the mop is just a way for you to soften the edge where the water is and if I got it on the mustache a little I can just use a q-tip and wipe it away we're gonna do the top of the nose his little nose is here you probably can't see it as well because um, sorry I have to move some stuff because the uh, I erased the tracing line so that they wouldn't be too dark but I'm going to do the same thing and just go because see I'm following her picture so right kind of to the left on top of the nose on the nose not on the face and then I turn my brush as well so that I can stick that water line right down in there and you can soften it with the mop but you don't have to um, then she wants to do the bottom of the lip I could switch brushes because I'm a heavy hand meaning I really load the brush up but I'm gonna try it with this brush but it's just I know myself and I will make I'll put two I'm just gonna load it right from that little section I'm going to go so 
See how I turn the brush too though? You want all the bristles to touch the surface as well. You don't just want that little tip that has the paint on it so that it you get the graduation of color. That looks pretty good. So like I got a water stain there. I want to make it darker. I'm going to go in again because I don't I don't feel like it came up. I don't I didn't really need it here as much as here. So if that happened, like I could just take a butt wipe because it's not cured yet. It's not set set. If you take a, a damp towel, you can get the paint off, but you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to take the um, undercoat off, you know. But I'm just, and I'm being, a, I'm being very particular right now. But I can do that because I, it's my piece, right? So basically, I just wanted it to stay, to concentrate in this area. So I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to go to the next direction. We'll come back to it. Because um, it says deepen the shading with country red. But I'm going to do it one more time with that color. Um, paint the eyes and inside of the mouth with lamp black. We can do that. So I have some lamp. Oops, my lid doesn't have a hinge. See how you can, you can, if the paint's wet, you can get it off your surface um, before it dries. So I'm just going to put a little lamp black out and I'm going to use um, a, like a number three round. That's my go-to for most little base coating things. And this one's got no paint on it because it's, I left it in water for too long. But it's just about like... A nice size for this type of stuff. I'm going to paint the eyes. So I just load the same way. I always want a little bit of water in my brush so that it's not gloppy and just a nice, I'd rather have two thin coats than one thick gloppy coat. But we'll put his little eyes on. Circles will grow on you so try to take your time and um, you can take it off if you don't like it, but I like them to be the same size, so that's why I'm a little focused here. Just want to make sure I don't make one way bigger than the other or the wrong shape. And I like them to be opaque, so I might come back and um, let me look from the front. That looks pretty good. They're both kind of going that way, which I like. And then this little triangle inside of the mouth is going to be black as well. And if you need to, you can get a liner brush so that you can really get that point kind of sharp in there. But I think you'll you should be fine. But I, I always. I'm going to be turning the piece all over the place because I want to make sure, and the lighting is crazy, like for me to film and look at it, I'm definitely going to be moving it so that I can see it because there's a shine on things because the lights come from above. All right, so that gave him a little inside of his mouth. Just going to let them dry and I'll put another coat. Now I can go back, but let's see what else it says on here. We're going to shade under the cuff of the hat with burnt sienna, so up here. And then you look at the picture. So there's a, and actually it looks like it starts around here to here. So kind of where, I don't know, I'm going to go from there to there. So I'm going to go back to my half inch. Oh, I need some burnt sienna first. Shake your paint because you don't you want all the polymers and things that are in there to be all mixed in so that it's the right consistency. Let me show you again what I do. I don't want to put it on there. So I get I go to my water, then I blot on my paper towel, then I corner load just a little, a little bit of paint, not a ton. Because you can always add more. I'm going to go back in a little bit more. And look at what you have here. If, if you like what you have here, then you'll like it when it gets onto here. But it's a little wet. I can see that. 
but I kind of like it because I need it to travel. The water actually helps the paint slide along. So I'm going to angle my brush and just stick it up against the edge. Actually, this is tricky. Um, such a heavy hand, but I might have too much paint. We'll see. You can always go back and add another float, so it would probably be better to start with a, a definitely a less is more approach because um, it's harder to take it off than it is to add another coat. So because I'm a heavy hand, I I go heavy. I just it's like it's in my nature, but then I'm just gonna soften it out. I like that. And remember, he's on a porch. You know what? I'm going to try and um, move this back a little. There we go. Because I'm going to come out of the shot because I'm pulling it towards me so I can see it. So that's up there. And then what else does it say? Paint the eyes. Dot the highlights in the eyes. And paint the, tr the th a thin highlight line on the right side of the lip. All right, and that's it. So I'm going to go back into that cheek color because I want to make that bigger. I want to focus more in the corner. So I'm just cleaning my brush. I'm going to corner load. I'm going to get a little more paint on there this time. And I'm going to focus more in this corner instead of going all the way up the mustache. And I'm going to Put my color really, Jenny, shh, and walk it this way, like walk it up that way instead of um, just going along the bottom and then soften the waterline. I think I, I like that better. You can, you can see how it's, it goes up more instead of just being along the edge. And this is from experience, you guys. It's not something that you're going to get at overnight. You have to practice. So I think I'm just going to go right back into my little runway here. I don't have to reload if I know I have enough water. And that's what's great about this brush is it definitely holds enough water. So I'm, again, I'm focusing on going this way. So I'm going to put the color in the corner. And I'm going to pat it and pull it back with me as I go. I like that. I think it did what I wanted. Hopefully I'm in the shot. And it seems like, you know, she could have shaded more like around the outside of the nose and stuff, but she's keeping it real simple. So that's good for, for you guys. I'm going to do the lip one more time too. I'm just using what's on the brush. And I'm going to, I want to, um, Maybe I'll put a little more on my um, eyes just to make them opaque. But then I'm going to move away from that. Even though I can put another layer with the um, country red, I want to wait. I want to let that fully dry. Just going to hit this black again. Joe cut my wood for his legs. So I'll be assembling this tonight for sure. Actually, this project really worked up fast. I guess it was just my, I was motivated to do it. But it um, worked up really fast. See, I'm getting ridges. I didn't mean to, but. All right, so let's move away from his little face. The next thing's the coat and the hat. So, base the pom-pom on the tip of the hat with buttermilk and shade it around the tip with sable brown. Oh, I don't remember grabbing sable brown. Oh, I did. Yep. And I don't know why you couldn't just use burnt sienna too, but it's a, it's a different, it's definitely, this is a much redder brown, the burnt sienna, so sable is a... <coughs> Maybe it's a little bit more, I don't know. She wanted it, so she's doing it. 
All right, and then we're going to do highlight with titanium white. Undercoat the hat and coat and sleeves. Transfer the stripe space. Okay. I want to get to this part because these, well, this, this and this are the same color. All right, we're just, I'm just going to follow the directions. Just going straight down that way all. I won't forget anything. So again, I'm going to look at the picture. And she just went up against the, the triangle there. So that's what we'll do. I'm loading my brush the same way. And I'm going to just put the color down up against the, the red. And I'm going to turn my bristles. And then I put it up against this side. And you can definitely do one side at a time. You do not need to do this the, this way. But I, I'm a professional. But then I'm just trying to join it like. See? And that's it. That's all she. And then we're going to highlight it too. Um, undercoat the hat and coat. I did that. Transfer the stripes. I did that. Base coat the red. I did that. With black plum, shade the hat along the bottom. Okay, so now I need some black plum. I love this color. This one's kind of running out, so I want to use what's left in here. Hi, Jen. What were you barking at? What were you barking at, huh? I, I think I'm trying to zoom in so you guys can see, but I think it's important to see what I'm doing over here, too. So I'm just going to come up a little bit more. And we're going to go, <coughs> excuse me, black plum. And just put in... I want to put the paint away as I go because I really don't like when I get too much stuff all over the place. Um, my angle brush. And it says, shade along the hat, along the bottom, in the folds, and in the folds. So let's look at the hat. There's a fold. I'm going to go back to my tracing. And you can trace this on, but I'll be, I can just wing it. So here's what I'm going to do. Right here, there's a little fold. So it's just gonna go like that, basically. And then there's another little fold right here. So I'll do that, and that's it. Those are the two little folds, which you could add them on with um, by tracing them. But if you look at this, see there's a little shading there where those folds are. And then <coughs> along the fur, I have a little, I think everyone around here is coming down with a little scratchy throat. I feel pretty good, but just have a little scratchy throat. Hey, Joe. He's not there. Is today Veterans Day? Happy Veterans Day to any of you guys. So I am corner loading, and then I'm look like pushing the paint into the bristles of the brush and getting that graduation of color. So you have to take your time over here. Then when you put the piece down, the color goes up against the edge, but all the bristles are on the surface, not just the tip of that. <coughs> and you need the water to help it slide. Now this is really sticky. It's not really moving. I might need more water on my brush. I don't like it when it gets sticky. So I did. I stuck my brush in the water and blotted. And then I just went right back to that runway. I call it a runway where I had already loaded the brush. And I am pretty chippy choppy. I'm not, in other words, I'm picking up my brush a lot. I noticed that from teaching you guys. So you're going to have to figure out how, you, and I, I always swivel my brush so that I leave the waterline up against somewhere where it, it can be hidden, disguised. Oh, now where did I put the mop? <coughs> I might have to postpone this if, my, if I keep coughing. But see, you can see that. 
it's not it's kind of subtle and I'm gonna stay away from there for now because um, I'll get those um, I'm telling you if you if I go over that while that's still wet I'll pick it up so I'm gonna leave it in the folds the sleeves in the red areas on the inside of the sleeves and down along the sides of the coat down the front flap of the coat marking off the even float line um, okay so this is what she means by the coat this piece this is the piece of wood that in the directions it talks about you're gonna have to go buy one and Joe bought me one it's a one by six and he cut it in a 24 inch length I'm gonna base coat this with red and then I'm gonna trace on or I'm pr I might just use a ruler and go down because it it re replicates a coat so this is what his coat is and that's what those three buttons are gonna get glued to after so I'm gonna be shading this whole thing but for right now I'm gonna do the um, just I'm just gonna stick with this right now but one I'll do this off camera and I'll finish that up because then when we um, glue everything together uh, <coughs> um, I want it finished okay so it says transfer the stripes okay with black plum shade along the bottom of the hat in the folds the sleeves in the red areas on the inside of the sleeves down the long sides of the coat and down the front flap of the coat oh see that's what she's using the tape for she's making a tape line so that you can just float and you won't make a mess maybe I'll show you that on camera then highlight the top of the hat down the outside edges of the red areas of the sleeves with neon fiery red neon fiery red and shade the green stripes along the inside edge of the sleeves with hauser medium green deepen the deepen the shade, shading with hauser dark green all right so I'm just gonna have to look at this and see so she means the inside of the sleeve so on this side see I think I need to shade down here on the hat with that black plum so I'm gonna go here to here I think Kiwi's calling me I might have to go get my birdie that's why I thought Joe was in there I was gonna ask him to bring her in here because she hears me talking and she's like, I want to know what's happening in there. I can probably do these little folds now. And even though um, using a big brush, only certain bristles will touch the surface, you still just just use it the same way you would if it was if your brush was touching the whole surface. I don't know if that made any sense, but I'm putting as many bristles on the surface that'll reach, in other words, type thing. And all right. Now I'm going to take that same color and go down only the red stripes with the black plum and create a shade. I'm going to start at the bottom. <clears throat> I think you can see pretty good from this um, distance away. And um, you can also see how I'm loading my brush. See, I, I didn't go back into the water. I just go right back into that runway. If And this brush seems to have, uh, it holds a lot of water. And that's what I like about a, um, a brush, if it holds enough water, especially when you're floating, because I use the water. Some people who do this technique use a medium to keep the paint wet. A lot of oil painters that have tried acrylic painting use a lot of mediums and there's a float medium um, they may use glazing medium or matte medium or something like that but they just use it as a, a way to keep their the paint wet because they're oil painters and they're used to taking their time and acrylics dry much faster so um, but I just learned by utilizing the water as my my float agent so I just like a brush that holds plenty of water. Now, if you look at this, <clears throat> I'm going to come in. 
This is super wet, super wet. Look, I mean, it's a puddle right there. So I'll blot and take a little water out of the brush and then pick that water up. Now I'm good. Okay, so it was a little too wet. I mean, and you can still see the water droplets there, but I like that. You just won't, don't want it drippy wet. So I have this one more section to do here. And I haven't even mopped these. I'm just leaving it. And right here. <clears throat> and if there's any place I feel like I missed or I want to darken, you can always go back in. There's one little spot there that's getting on my nerves. <clears throat> so I'm going to flip it and do the other side. Because I'm right-handed, it's easier for me to float that way than to turn my brush and go the other way. So just turn the piece so that you are in the best possible position to get, to get a good result and to be happy, not to struggle and frustrate yourself. There was just, I think I didn't reload correctly. So I have water, blot, color, and then I'm gonna go right from the edge of this little, and then I'm gonna start back in there kind of connect it but all the bristles are on the surface because I need in other words what I'm saying is oops, see um, all of these bristles are on the surface I want all of this to touch the surface not like this I mean sometimes you'll see me with it just the tip because I want just color there like if it's right up against the edge but the water is on this piece. So this is paint, some paint and water, and then this is just water. You don't want paint over here, just water on that edge. So if I'm not using all the bristles, I won't have access to that water. So when I keep repeating myself and saying all the bristles on the surface, that's because sometimes people tend to pick up their brush like this, but you need to, because it's an angle brush, your brush the this thing <laughs> is going to be on an angle when you're painting it won't be straight up and down so all these bristles are touching the surface the chisel edge of my brush in other words you know so and then I also like to swoop like I leave my I pick up my brush in such a way that I'm leaving that edge it, it hidden somewhere. I'll show you. Well, when I do it, and uh, these are really easy because it's just a long an edge that doesn't really need hiding. But I'm just going to pick it up right perpendicular to this green edge so it just leaves the color right there. all the bristles can't touch the surface because the surface is too small but it's still good all right what else did I want to do I don't like this as much I gotta get in there well, it looks good I'm pretty happy with that I'm going to go back up to the face and just finish that by putting a little bit of watered down country red. I had just given the, the stripes a little second coat because they didn't seem opaque. So I have some out and I'm just going to go into the water blot and just a tiny bit of paint. And then I'm going to rinse my brush off blot and just load it right from here because this is really watered down just to bring the I want to specially do his nose because I think Santa has a really um, shiny nose or maybe that's Rudolph but whatever um, I just want it to be red 
and then I turn my brush so that I leave I don't know that it really redded it up too much it still seems kind of corally I'll put a little bit in the corner Definitely on his lip. And see that I really didn't, I should have used a smaller brush because I didn't, I just wanted it dark so I didn't put all the bristles on the surface. I cheat sometimes. I don't know, it's not that I cheat but I just know what I'm looking for so I kind of do it that way. I really don't know if I'm in the shot, you guys, because I'm so, I get so caught up in it. Like, it's so relaxing to me. I can't help it. I don't know if I even changed anything, but whatever. I got it. I know I got it on the mustache. It's looking a little sloppy. I haven't painted in a long time. I've been doing a lot more mixed media, so maybe my work isn't as neat as it once was. But I still think you get the gist. I get it. It's looking cute. And he's going to be on my porch, so I'm excited. All right, let me find those instructions again. So that's really all I needed to do on the face, I think. Let's see. Paint the eyes. Okay. Dot the highlights in the eyes and on the cheeks and paint a thin highlight line on the right side of the lip with titanium white. So let's just go ahead and finish that. I don't know why she hasn't, didn't have us do the, um, maybe it'll be under details or something, but we didn't do his little eyebrows, but I'll do it. Maybe there's going to be hair at the end, hair, that would be under hair. Um, going to get a liner, like my little teensy, this is a rigger, and that's more for line work, so I'll keep that out, but I have like a detail, this one, this is a tiny little dot making thing. Let's see what it says. This is called a 10 slash zero and it's all splayed out. I can't use that. For details, oh excuse me, you really need um, something that is, the. here we go, this is my good one. This is a 10 slash zero but it's got a longer bristle. Don't mash your brushes down guys. Try to keep them nice because you'll miss them when they don't work anymore. All right, so I'm just gonna look by using my little guide. He's got little white dots, and you could use a little stylus if you wanted to. Right up here, he comes to life, look. up. Oh, that was water. My brush had water, too much water. I have to blot. I think sometimes when I dip it in water, the water drips down the ferrule like onto the, so just be careful. And if you catch it, you can get it off so you don't have to, you know, live with it if you don't like it. I think a dip dot would look nice, but they're, you have to wait for them to dry because you'll end up sticking your finger in it and then you're, you know, got to deal with it. And then she has these two little dots, which I like, and I wouldn't add them if I didn't like them, but I do like them. I think they're cute. I think I need more paint on my brush and just really put it down. Isn't that cute? And then she said to put um, a highlight to the right side of the lip with titanium. I can't really see it, but I think it's kind of just like this. Something like that. I think that's cute. And I can't wait till he gets his eyebrows. All right, so I think that part's done. Then we were on that coat and hat. We have to shade the green with Hauser medium green. So I went around all the red parts, but now we're going to go the same thing, but on the green parts with Hauser medium green. You only need a tiny bit of paint too. Um, so this, it go, your paint will go a long way. Same thing, I'm doing the, this whole section of painting. 
is float. So corner load and blend it into the brush and then go to your piece. Go all the way down up against the body. I don't think you can really see this that much. I would see again and I'm lazy. I would have just went right with Hauser Dark. But I mean I'm going to do what Renee says because she designed it. It's you know there's a there's a reason she does it the way she does it and I have to be patient and let it and I'm kind of pulling and swooping hopefully I'm in the shot oh god am I yes swooping around but all the bristles are on the surface because you can see the water shining back there so hopefully you'll try it don't get frustrated um, definitely takes practice and I used to paint like every day so I'm gonna let that dry for a minute and you know what we didn't highlight with titanium white um, let's see shade with sable and highlight with titanium white so I'm gonna go around the out well, like kind of on the top I want to look at the picture and see yeah you can definitely see it's like a nice bright edge there so I'm gonna go on that side with titanium white blotting I cannot believe it's 440 already wow I had a busy day but I couldn't wait to paint but I had to exercise I had to now I gotta go make dinner and I don't want to stop but this will be done tonight have to oh crap I wasn't even in the shot but look you see how bright it gets I'm gonna go back up it's just I can't if I I'll be out of the shot too much but you can see the difference Look how perfect. Okay. Um, what else? A little bit more. I'll stop at five. I'm just making pasta tonight, so. Um, da -dum -dum -dum. Transfer the stripes. I did that. Um, shade, shade, shade. Highlight the top of the hat and down the outside edges of the red areas on the sleeves with neon's fiery red. You guys, this color is so cool. I was introduced to this color by Maxine Thomas. I paint a lot of her Santas and she always highlights her red with this color. It's a neon and you couldn't even get it in the stores years ago. Um, you had to order it special. Shade the green stripes. I did that, and what am I going to... Oh, I have to deepen them with Hauser Dark. And um, highlight with olive green. Okay, so we'll do that, and then I'll, call, I'll take a break and go make dinner. So we're going to highlight now this side of the sleeves and the top of the hat and the back of the hat with this hot shots and it's a very um, transparent color as well so you really shake it up <coughs> I have to take a drink I'll get a cough drop <clears throat> when I come back because I can just feel I have this tickle it's gonna cause an issue so I'll have to Get a cough drop. So I'm still corner loading. It's the same technique. I'm just taking some of the water off my ferrule because it's going to drip down onto the brush. And I'm just going to load it up. And I'm not shy with this paint but because it's so transparent. But watch how this will pop. I'm just going to go right along the top edge and down that little fold. Remember that I put with my pencil on this side of the fold 
and just turn my brush so it kind of can you see that isn't it so cool I love it all right let's go up the up from the bottom here so I'm sticking my corner in the corner and just going to slide it up the top and behind that fold and then the last little part I'm going to go I'm going to take it from the bottom of the fold and tuck it right there just reloading It gets dark so early too. That's the thing. Um, I just don't want to stick the whole thing. All right. So I have to turn it. Sorry, guys. I'm going to put the color edge of the brush up against the fold. And so it's kind of like a back to back float of the shade. And then I'm just going to tuck this behind. <laughs> Doesn't that look cool? Then we're gonna do, we're gonna do this whole um, along the sides. I wonder if I should be going on the actual edge part. My husband Joe's outside doing the lights. Ooh, shoot, see I stuck my hand in that. I think I might have took some off. See look, I have it right there on my arm. Because it's still wet, that's what happened. So I can see where I did it. I'll just put some more. I love it. Um, anywho, because he we do such an extreme light show, so I'm just holding my hand up so I don't lay it in any wet spots um that he's getting everything out there so that like I think Thanksgiving is when he's planning on turning everything on and I want to do this edge too um, I'm gonna give that a second to dry so I'll go to this side first just because if I if I put my wet brush down and it's not dry yet it'll pick it up I want to just get that baby wipe because I think I put my hand down in other areas. Um, trying not to touch. See how far I can go with this brush? Thank you, Tracy Morrell. Um, the brush guys, that's where she recommended you get this, and this is a faux squirrel, um, half inch, shader, half inch, faux squirrel, angle shader. Can you see that? Oh, it's coming to life. Oh man, wait until we do the berries. You guys, it's going to be so stinking cute. I'm just going to stick a little bit of that Hot Shots right here. Alright, then we're going to go with this Hauser Dark and the Olive Green. And I'll put them out and I'm just going to go to town here. don't have very much left of this. There we go. So it's really this whole thing is being done with one brush basically, you know, I mean the, sh the highlighting part. So let me go back in with a little bit of the dark hauser and really get this shading. That's why sometimes I don't understand, I don't know why they do double Maybe you're supposed to walk the, the lighter color out further and then it will be even more of a graduation. I don't know, but I, I'm a corner cutter. I was just telling my husband that. And I shouldn't because then I won't learn the lessons of why they, people do things the way they do them. But I'm just impatient and think I know better. <laughs> 
and I'm learning that I don't know better. <clears throat> This is, for me, this is super fun because it, it starts to come to life. And um, I'm excited to see this little guy out on my porch greeting everyone. I think I did decide I want to find something that says welcome. Either a stencil or I'll just write it out. Or maybe I have some stamps that I can create a little. I, I'm pretty sure I'll be able to figure something out. I might even have um, something else that says welcome. So I wasn't able to, I didn't have enough water on my brush to be able to pull that around that whole holly leaf. But I'll go back in a sec. So you heard me just go reload, so now I'm just going to take it and go this way. I'm going to film some of um, the light show this year. I don't remember if I put it up last year. I think I filmed it, but I don't know that I actually loaded it on to YouTube. Um, but anywho, alright, and now I'm going to highlight this side. with the olive green. And when you haven't used the paint in a long time, it can be a little thick. So just take your time and load your brush up how you how you want it. I don't just want that water to sit there because then the color puddles. So that's because my brush is so wet because I tend to always have a wet brush. You want it to just melt, like just dissolve and not leave a puddle there that the, that the paint can pool up and just sit, you know? That's the idea and that's why I definitely mop a lot because I'm a heavy hand. I have a lot of paint and a lot of water on my brush all the time. So, um, what do you think? I can't wait to do his beard. I gotta go cook though. And then to do the little gingy bread, he's gonna be so cute. So let's see. Paint the stitching on each side of the green stripes on the sleeves and down the center of the front flap with camel. Oh, so that's... You could either use a rigger. Now let me come over here and put this aside for a sec. So here's the difference. A rigger is another brush that, I think this is faux squirrel too. Yeah. It's another brush that I ordered <coughs> from the brush guys because Tracy Moreau likes them so much. So um, I wanted to try it. Uh, but it's got a little bit more of a thick bristle because it holds a lot of water and that means it holds a lot of paint. So you can go further. You can load it and go a long way with it. So this is the difference. If I will get some camel and when you do the stroke work or line work like this you want your paint to be the consistency of ink. So I'm going to put water on my brush. I'm not going to blot and I'm just going to come over here and I added it to the paint. And then you load your brush. So now I have lots of paint on here. Oh gosh, itchy nose. I'm going to come in. So we're going to make stitch lines. Now this brush can also lay down. You see, because that's, the bristles are so thick. There's a lot of bristles is what I mean. So I can really spread them out. But you can come up on the chisel edge of it and really get a thin line too. Okay, so that's the rigger. This is called a script liner. Same thing. I'm just going to get my paint inky. 
and come over here and just stay up. I usually use my pinky to kind of support my hand so I'm up on the tip of the brush. And just a script liner, you can really get a thin line. So I'm probably going to use this. And this is how thick that would go. It just doesn't have as many bristles. So, but I'm going to make stitches. And here's the picture. See on the green? There's little stitches right on the edge. So I'm going to go right down. Let's see. I'll go up a tint. I'm sorry. I don't want to come out of the shot. Oops. Put my. Oh, that was thick. This is just a detail that is going to, from far away, so don't, it's not, again, it's not the main thing. The whole thing is going to be what you see, not each little stitch that I'm doing right now, right? So don't get, don't get crazy and beat yourself up about little stuff like this. This is just, up. Oh, I need more water. This is what makes it all cute. Trying to keep it right on the edge between the green and the red. Make sure you don't forget to load your brush properly each time because you'll get a much better result if your brush is loaded correctly, you know? And if it's too watery, then the lines will be washed out. You know, they won't be as opaque if you, and you know, they'll disappear. So you're doing all this work for nothing. So make sure that there, there's a, enough paint. And this is seeming a little tattered on the edge. So I've, it's probably a little beat up and I'm not really getting a nice, I'm going to go to the rigger for one sec. I just want to see if I can get up on that chisel. <clears throat> it's a much newer brush as well. But if I flatten it out a little bit, I want to see if I can get a nice solid. Yeah, you can. It really gives a nice line. I like it. So every little detail is so good. All right, you guys. Hopefully, you know, you're enjoying it. If you're painting along with me, if you're not doing this project, just get a brush and some paint and try the techniques. Just make a circle and try, try and do some floating or you know, some line work or make some stitches and see if you can get the brush control and, you know, play a little bit. And you can add it to your toolbox of tricks when you do your mixed media. And I'll never stop floating, so if you guys follow me, there's you're bound to be um, doing some floating because I do it all the time. I love it. It's such a cool technique. So let me go up. He's starting to look cool. So you can see the shading and the highlighting, right? You can add whatever you want to add. That's a thing. Renee sets you up for cuteness regardless. But then you could add, why couldn't we add a real holly? Oh, I forgot to put that look. I forgot to add that on his hat. Oh, I'm so excited. I didn't see, do you see that? I'll tra the, trace those on before, um, I don't know if they're on the tracing, look. I didn't trace them on, let's look at the, see she didn't have them on here. So I'm just gonna do um, the ones, probably let's see, let's see the size of it. These are much bigger. So I would probably, I'm just gonna make three little circles up there and I'm gonna wing it because I really think she needs them. But yeah, like you could put bling. You could do whatever you want. That's the thing. So I hope this was fun, you guys. 
Um, I'll be back after dinner, and we'll do some more. All right? Thanks for watching.